Hello and welcome to another video where I have something really special for you guys, something that you don't see every day. And I'm not talking about this personal computer, but I'm talking about this expansion unit for the IBM personal computer. So just look at this setup. Isn't this great? A fellow retro collector and viewer of this channel has offered to lend this unit to me so that I could create some videos on it. And I am very happy to do so because this IBM personal computer expansion unit isn't something you see every day. Sitting just below the IBM personal computer, it actually expands the IBM PC with a hard drive and some additional expansion slots. Keep in mind that the original IBM PC only had five expansion slots and two floppy drives. That was it. So if you wanted to have some additional expansion slots or hard drive, you needed to have one of these. Back you can see how these two units are hooked up. Both units have an expansion card which hosts a 62 pin connector allowing you to hook up this cable. 62 pins and the IBM branded connector. So on the top we have the IBM PC and on the bottom we have the expansion unit. Now the IBM PC has a power supply but the expansion unit also has its own power supply needed to provide power to the hard drive. As you can see here we have a keyboard connector and obviously on the expansion unit we don't have one. And the expansion unit also gives the PC eight additional expansion slots. Now the IBM PC, despite its size, only had five expansion slots. And a minimum of two were occupied, one for the floppy drives and one for the video. So the extra expansion was a welcome addition. Now hooking the two systems together was done via two expansion cards, one on each unit, which is the extender card on the IBM PC and the receiver card on the IBM expansion unit. And here we can see both the extender card and the receiver cards. So here is the extender card put into the IBM PC. And here we have the receiver card, which is put in the IBM expansion unit. It features the same connector and it uses this big old cable to connect the two cards together and subsequently also the two units together. Now this is a really thick cable and you can still buy this cable online should you not have such a cable. Mauser still sells this cable. I'll put a link in the description for it. And even if you happen to be missing either the extender or the receiver card, there is a GitHub project online where somebody took the original IBM designs and created his own version of the extender and receiver card. So these are basically copies of the existing IBM ones with some minor tweaks and it has full schematics and bill of materials available on the GitHub page. So definitely check that one out. Should you be in the market for an extender or a receiver card? And just look at those connectors again. This is retro computing at its finest. But let's take a look inside of the two units. On the left we have the IBM PC and on the right we have the IBM expansion unit. Now not a lot going on on the right except for the presence of a hard drive, power supply, MFM controller for the hard drive, and the receiver card allowing you to hook up a host PC via the extender card. So the problem with the IBM PC was that it only had five expansion slots. Like I said, two of them were already mandatory. One was for the video and one for the floppy drives. But let's say you wanted to add a CGA color graphics card or perhaps also a networking card. You would have no room to fit any additional cards anymore because all five would be used. So let's say you had an 8-bit sound card that you wanted to use or you had some additional I.O. and perhaps a real-time clock that you wanted to have in your PC or some other exotic expansion card or even a memory card, you would be completely left out. Also note there is no room for a hard drive in the IBM PC, let alone the fact that the power supply unit would be capable of running one. Now this was obviously solved by the IBM PC XT, the 5160. That one came with a hard drive and a floppy drive. And more importantly, it also had eight available expansion slots. But not every IBM PC owner would just throw away its old PC and replace it with a new one, no. 
And IBM was well aware of that, so they introduced the expansion unit, the 5161, that they would be happy to sell to you. Giving you seven additional expansion slots, room for a hard drive, and enough power to drive the hard drive. Simply by hooking them up using this simple 62-pin cable. And this was real plug and play because this simply worked. There were no drivers that needed to be installed, no software, nothing. It simply worked as we'll see later on. Now let's zoom in on the expansion unit with the 10 megabyte hard drive, the MFM controller card, and the receiver card to hook up the host PC. So let's take out all of the expansion cards here so that we can have a closer look at the main board which is nothing more than a simple backplane giving you the eight ISA slots and an AT power supply to provide power to it. Moving on to the hard drive, which is a full height 10 megabyte MFM hard drive from Seagate, the ST412, which is also found in the IBM PC XT. So let's go ahead and remove the cable so we can slide it on out. And here we have it. The power supply from the expansion unit, the main board with the ISA slots, 10 megabyte MFM hard drive, receiver card, and MFM controller card for our Seagate hard drive. So here we can clearly see that this is not a full-fledged computer. It's simply a backplane with the eight ISA slots. It also has the AT power connector, some decoupling capacitors. And it also contains the signal generator for the ISA slots. Now the receiver card is something that is required to hook up the expansion unit. And usually when you pick up an expansion unit, this card will probably be in there. And that's a lot more than you can say than about the extender card, which is a lot more difficult to find. And most likely if you already have an IBM PC, you will not have a card like this. Now, the original owner was lucky enough to purchase both the IBM PC and the expansion unit in one go, giving him everything, both the two cards as well as the cable. An item I was also bidding on, as a matter of fact, but he beat me to the punch. But it all worked out fine. I can make a video review of it, so I'm perfectly happy with that. The controller card for the MFM hard drive is the standard IBM Xebec controller card that you also find in the IBM PC XT, the IBM 5160. So this is a single geometry MFM controller. It will only work with 10 megabyte MFM hard drives. So a dip switch to configure additional drives is lacking on this card. And finally here we have the full height Seagate ST412 MFM hard drive boasting 10 megabytes of disk space with the beautiful IBM front badge. Yeah, really nice looking full height MFM drive. But unfortunately, as I was turning on the machine, I was greeted with this error code coming from the IBM PC. So this is 101001, 201 being a memory error and the 1010 indicating the location of the bad memory chip. To debug this, we need to know how the memory banks are laid out. So this PC has 256 kilobytes of RAM, a bank zero, which is soldered on the main board and three more banks, which are socketed. Each bank has a parity chip and eight memory chips indicated by bit zero to bit seven. Now, moving on to the error message. Now the first 10 indicates that there is a problem with the main board bank number one. And the other 10 translates to bit four, which is the fifth chip in bank number one. So let's go ahead and pull out the suspected bad memory chip and replace it with a new one. So the existing one was this MOSTEC 64 kilobit uh, RAM chip. And I'll be replacing it with another one I had in my spare bin, which should hopefully work. So let's put it in there and let the machine boot. So time to put back all of our expansion cards, starting with the extender card, the floppy drive controller, hooking up the floppy drive cable to the controller and the MDA video card. 
and upon boot the error code went away and after a long wait the PC finally booted. We heard the beep, heard the floppy drive spinning and instead of going into basic we noticed that it was booting straight off the hard drive without any issue. So this PC will boot just as if it had an internal hard drive. Nothing would make you guess that this is running off an expansion unit. There are no special drivers to be installed, no special software to load. Everything works just out of the box. So this continues to amaze me that lots of these old computers with these 30, 35 year old hard drives still continue to work this day. I noticed that there were lots of files on this 10 megabyte hard drive. There was Lotus 123 on it. So I decided to take a backup of the hard drive, which is something I usually do when I get an old PC, not to look at personal data or something, but just to see if there are some interesting programs on there. And for that, I typically boot off a MS-DOS floppy and start the InterServe application, which allows you to transfer files over a serial or parallel port. So this computer doesn't have a serial port, but it does have a parallel port on the uh, video card. So I'll be hooking up a more modern PC using Interlink that I can use to connect to the InterServe running on the IBM PC and transfer files that way. So as you can see on the other computer, the more modern computer, some drives will be mapped. And then I can access the C drive on the IBM PC and just create a backup on the other PC. The turbo speed here needs to be taken with a mountain of salt as it took quite a while to copy all of the data from the 10 megabyte hard drive over the parallel port. And just as I thought that I was in the clear, I was greeted with another memory error, this time error number 2001. So again, a bad memory chip, which did seem a bit odd. The original owner never used the PC all of that much because he got a 1701 hard drive error upon starting it, probably related to a cabling issue. But this is again a memory issue. So let's take what we learned a couple of minutes ago and apply it here. So we've got error code 2001. So this one is in bank number two and it's gonna be the first chip. So let's go ahead and remove this one as well and replace it with a new one. Now, if you start the IBM PC without the expansion unit hooked up to the extender card, you will be greeted with this 1801 error, but it will not prevent the IBM PC from booting. The only thing that will happen, obviously, is because it doesn't have a hard drive now, it will boot straight into IBM BASIC. Another thing I noticed is that when you shut off the expansion unit while the PC is running, you will get some unexpected behavior, like this parity check 2 error that you're seeing here. But this is it for part one of this video on the IBM expansion unit. I will do a follow-up video where I'll be adding lots more stuff in the expansion unit just to see how far we can take this. So if you're interested in seeing that, please make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And I hope to see you guys soon in a next video. So take care and bye bye for now.